right, folks, here's something I have been talking about as far as self-driving cars. I actually can't remember which video I did. I actually talked about it where um, me and uh, my buddy who was an engineer at Ford, we actually were talking about this years ago, actually, self-driving cars. And he was telling me that the biggest roadblock was legislation. In other words, the manufacturers and the companies didn't want to be completely liable for accidents and stuff like that. They wanted to limit it to what a normal human driver would be actually be charged in case there was an accident. Because, you know, companies like Waymo and Uber, Lyft and the manufacturers like GM and Ford have deep pockets and they didn't want to be on the hook in case you, know, you have a standard accident just like any other human driver. And uh, years ago, that was he was probably right. But since we're in this technological arms race with China and you know Europe and whoever, Congress was going to have to make special leeway for for things like self-driving cars and AIs and that kind of stuff. And I remember I think I put a video out maybe a year ago. I think, I think it was just about a year ago where Congress had actually passed bills to actually open up this kind of this kind of thing. And I think a lot of people said that driverless cars were probably not going to be um, implemented because of that. I think it was actually an accident in Phoenix, as a matter of fact. With, well, I'm not sure whether it was, a, it was actually an Uber car, I do believe. It's an Uber car. And, and everybody said this is probably going to stall everything out. And um, I didn't think so. I thought that Congress was actually going to overlook this and it's going to keep full, full speed ahead. That's why I want to read you parts of this, because this is from our ARS Technical. And it's kind of long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I'm going to read you the, like the first first portion of it. Fully driverless Waymo taxis are due out this year, alarming critics. Waymo, Google's self-driving car project, is planning to launch a driverless taxi service in Phoenix in the Phoenix area in the next three months. It won't be a pilot project or a publicity stunt either. Waymo is planning to launch a public commercial service without anyone in the driver's seat. And to date, Waymo's technology has gotten remarkably little oversight from the government officials in either Phoenix or Washington, D.C. If a company wants to sell a new airplane or medical device, it must undergo an extensive process to prove to federal regulators that it's safe. Currently, there is no comparable requirement for self-driving cars. Federal and state laws allow Waymo to introduce fully self-driving cars onto the public streets in Arizona without any formal approval process. That's not an oversight. It represents a bipartisan consensus in Washington that strict regulation of self-driving cars would do more harm than good. In other words, they basically they've been given their marching orders. They don't have any choice. If you think about what would be required for some government body to examine the design of a self-driving vehicle and decide if it's safe, that's a very difficult task, said Ed Felton, a Princeton computer scientist who advised the Obama White House on technology issues. Under both Barack Obama, get that, both Barack Obama and Donald Trump, the federal government has taken a hands-off approach to driverless car regulation. Instead of enacting new safety regulations for self-driving cars, Felton says, federal policies have tried to make sure that vehicle safety regulations don't inadvertently make it more difficult to roll out self-driving vehicles. Remember I was telling you that Congress wanted, well, they wanted so many self-driving vehicles out there by 2019. It's been mandated by Congress. Self-driving cars do need to comply with an existing set of safety regulations called the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, but that's not a big hurdle in practice. Waymo plans to address it by simply building its service using Chrysler Pacifica vans that are already FMVSS compliant. Meanwhile, Congress is considering legislation that would make it easier for companies to manufacture driverless vehicles that aren't fully FMVSS compliant. This would allow GM to start making a car with no steering wheel as early as next year. This hands-off approach drives some safety advocates crazy. I think it's stunning, says Kathy Chase, the head of 
advocates for highway and auto safety, about the deregulatory trend. Mary Missy Cummings, an engineering professor at Duke agrees, I don't think there should be any driverless cars on the road, she tells the ARS. I think it's unconscionable that no one is stipulating that testing needs to be done before they're put out on the road. It's the last part I'll read. But so far, these advocates' demands have fallen on deaf ears. Partly, that's because federal regulators don't want to slow down the introduction of a technology that could save a lot of lives in the long run. That's a lie. Partly, it's because they believe that liability concerns give companies a strong enough incentive to behave responsibly. That's also a lie. And partly, it's because no one is sure how to regulate self-driving cars effectively. When it comes to driverless cars, there's no consensus on what it means to be safe or how we go about proving that, says Bryant Walker-Smith, a legal scholar at the University of South Carolina. Now, it goes on to say that other other transportation uh, technologies have to prove themselves well before they do this. And this is actually a very, very long article. And they're right. And normally this probably would happen. But the streets are already being reformed for these cars. And uh, right after they do the cars, they got to do the trucks. And other more, how can I say, um, authoritarian countries don't have these restrictions. They said that they want driverless cars without a steering wheel and whatnot. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to be produced. And right after you get driverless uh, taxis, you're going to get uh, driverless delivery vans. Um, driverless pizza thing, you know, pizza delivery uh, vehicles without without drivers or steering wheels, and that's going to greatly greatly speed up the automation process because the technology is already here. The thing is, the hurdles that you have to get around is the uh, regulatory. So if the United States wants to speed up the the uh, the implementation of this technology, they're going to have to clear the path, clear the regulatory path for these things to actually be implemented. And so far, they have done that. Now, they slowed down the trucks because the truckers actually complain. They just slowed it down. They haven't stopped it. But I think also the other part is that uh, for like people like Tesla, uh, they don't have the batteries to actually go in these trucks. But... This is just one peek into one little small segment. And this is like a test case because people can see driverless vehicles. They can see driverless taxis. And when they say they they want to produce vehicles that are not the standard uh, safety standard is they want to produce smaller vehicles for like one or two people without a steering wheel and cut down on the size because the manufacturers already produce these things, but the thing is they need to get the regulatory uh, laws streamlined so they can actually implement this stuff. Because if not, America's going to fall behind. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. And once you fall behind in this race, because every all the technology is, is going to have to accelerate exponentially. So once you fall behind, you may never catch up. And I'm sure a liberal country like the United States is feeling a lot of pressure. And you're going to see a lot more legislation and approaches to legislation that's going to seem like more authoritarianism and more bipartisan. Like it's not going to be about uh, Democrats or Republicans or conservatives versus liberals. Everybody's going to be in on this. From the conservative bankers to the liberal uh, technologists like Google, like Google, like I said, Google is going to get carte blanche. Google is going to get carte blanche because Google carries a name that people trust. So Google is going to get carte blanche. Ford eventually is going to get carte blanche because Ford is waiting in the ring, in the wings with, uh, I think, is it Lyft? No, I think Lyft is is uh, GM. So Ford and, and Uber are probably waiting in the wings because I do believe it was that Uber car that hit that that pedestrian on the bike that that actually caused a, a bump in the road, but uh, evidently Congress doesn't care about the bump in the road, full speed ahead. Prepare, folks, because we're not even talking about the AIs that are taking service jobs that we don't even see. AIs that can actually make cold calls in phone centers that we can't even see because it's invisible to most people. Uh, uh, phone centers, 
uh, and cold calls are you know done by human beings and very few people have to actually interact with these things but if the technology is already there no matter how crude it is right now and in, and it's actually pretty sophisticated it's not really crude it's actually pretty sophisticated and since we're training it by talking to our devices and doing searches, it's going to get better exponentially because the more devices you put out there to do this, to actually interact with human beings, the, the AIs takes all that data and they get better because you have more people teaching it. You've got billions of people teaching these uh, programs how to interact with us. So it's like the old adage, we're training our replacements. We're literally, literally training our replacement because say in Ford or GM or where whatever manufacturing company is and you have cobots okay you have cobots you're being monitored photographed and monitored and examined how you interact with that cobot so eventually what's going to happen they're going to take all that data and they're going to figure out how to replace you along with the with your cobot uh, companion you know, there's another article I have to put up that that uh, Japan has a, uh, uh, a workerless uh, warehouse where like 90 percent of the workers are gone. It's already up and running. And once the technology is already out there and proven that it works, it can be easily replicated. Hold on to your hats, folks. This stuff is actually going to appear a lot faster than we think, because they've been pre they've been preparing for this stuff for the last three or four years and right under our noses. And like any technology, uh, they're afraid of Luddites because if Luddites get spooked, they're going to destroy the technology just like they did 200 years ago. And they don't want us spooked. They want to keep us nice and calm. Everything's good. Uh, the technology is good. You're not going to lose your jobs. You're going to get more leisure, work less hours, on and on and on. And I hope that's true. I really hope that's true. But in the dog eat dog capitalist competition that they're locked in with China, with a pragmatic uh, country like China, I don't know. I don't know because China can do stuff that we can't. They can snap their fingers and get things built. We can't. We don't even have a bullet train. China's building a whole, whole uh, network of high speed trains going across the country. We don't even have one. United States. Yeah, the bullet train technology has been around for 40 years, 50 years. We don't have one. What does that tell you about a liberal country? Anyway, we'll jump off of here. That's all I wanted to drop. This is BGS out, and I will see you guys on the next one.